So one of the things that I wanted to do today is actually tell you about how I approach the markets and how I trade. And this is something that I've been doing the whole of 2023. Not necessarily the execution part, but mostly grappling with the whole concepts and actually going through what is it that I'm aiming to do and what is it that I would want to achieve and what system that I use, what criteria do I have, how do I execute that and how do I let that play out when that criteria is met to execute. Hopefully that made sense. I probably said a lot there. and I, You probably don't know what I'm talking about. So basically what I'm trying to say to you guys is what am I looking for? If it happens, how do I get involved? And when I get involved, what criteria is there for me to get involved? And if it's there, I execute the criteria. So basically, the first thing that I'll probably say is I look for structure. I'm going to be typing this out, structure. The second thing is within that structure, we can look for supply and demand zones the third thing is our confirmation so this is actually not from me this is actually from a youtube channel or, or another trader it's actually called metafx you guys should actually go check them out in fact no this is not it sorry that's just my gis studies yeah this is basically everything like these guys are amazing like you'll see some of the things on this youtube channel are really inspired from really from anton like i've been watching this channel and i've been on i've not really been on the mentorship yet i maybe should join but i've been watching them for the whole of 2023 and it's starting to make sense you can actually see like everything yeah go check them out guys they are amazing i don't know if i can actually do that on youtube actually talk about other people's youtube channels and stuff on youtube but anyway i'm yet to I'm, I'm yet to show you my ideas and i'm yet to show you what i've learned from other people and just explain it in a way that makes sense to me because i know most of you guys probably won't even i'm not even in the trading space anyway so you won't find the stuff unless you're in it so you guys know me and i'm just showing you like what i do and where this comes from and it's not necessarily about your idea you know you never made it up and just because you didn't make it up doesn't mean now you can't teach it no i mean everything on this world is basically recycled in a way you know i mean teachers didn't make that stuff up they just taking what they've learned and they've taken what they've trained and then they're just passing it on to other people so yeah guys i didn't make this stuff up by the way i'm not going to pretend that i did i didn't it's it's influenced from other people and i'm just showing you and i'm just going to explain it in a way that makes sense to me and hopefully you can actually understand what I'm talking about. But you need to watch this several times. And you obviously need to go fiddle with charts. It'll probably take you months, you know, days, months. Yeah, days, weeks, months, years. It's going to take you a very long time. So basically, I've really d done everything over there. So structure is probably one of the things that I look for. So let's just go do it on a chart right now, right? So let's just do this. I'm on the month chart on gold i am going to zoom out in fact let's just make it simple because i think i'll probably do that on another time this is a monthly chart right the reason why i wanted to go on a bigger time frame because obviously big time frames they can often give you an indication about where money is going and where money is entered in the market and what the structure is because of the money a couple of things that you guys need to understand is that structure is not necessarily where money is going it's more about the context of the structure where the money is going. So this right year, this whole move over here is bearish, you know. I mean, it's, it's going down, 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 down. And this whole move up here, it's going up, 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 up. And then literally over here, this whole sideways movement over here is doing nothing. It's neither going up or down. So that's mainly what I mean about structure. Context is taking that structure and now telling a story and trying to make sense about what is happening within that structure in the sense of where money wants to go and you want to be part of that journey of where money is going you don't know where it's going to go you don't know 
for how long that journey will take. But the only thing that you can see based on what I'm going to talk about in this video is money traveling in a certain direction. So let me just turn this thing off. Hopefully that made sense as well. So actually, I thought I'd do another YouTube video, but let me just do it now. So basically what I look at, right, just to establish st structure. And you can do this on any time frame. I just chose the monthly because I just want you guys to understand what I'm talking about. And I want to make myself understand this as well because... If you look at the gold price from, I'm going back all the way into the the 1970s, the 1980s. You know, I don't need to do that because the monthly chart is a huge disconnect between you actually trading and you telling a story or actually finding the structure of the market. So keep in mind that the monthly time frame is very, 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 has a big disconnection between lower time frames and bigger time frame so the monthly it, it, it's not connected to the one minute the five minute the 15 minute the one hour it could be bullish on the one hour chart for five days but it won't make a difference on the monthly chart you know so anyway i'm just doing this to actually get structure by the way and just to give you an understanding of what's going on you can take the same principle and do it on any market on any time frame so basically right in fact, this is the wrong one. So gold was in a situation. So this is, I'm just going to look at the structure of this pattern right now. So gold was in a situation where there was no delivery for about 30 years. From about, let's just say 1980, 1981 to about 2007, right? The market or the gold price was literally doing nothing for 30 years. Not until about 2007, 2008, there started to be lower time frame proofs that money was getting involved. So after 30 years of doing nothing, finally, money started to get involved. And once it got involved, it catapulted itself to new highs. So instantly, I already knew that, okay, this is a bullish trend. In fact, no, I didn't know because I wasn't really trading in 2008 and 2007. But b based on structure... This was no, or this had no delivery, sorry, for 30 years. And then the delivery or the trend started after that 30 years of consolidation or that 30 years of weak to strong hand or that 30 years of accumulation because it moved away from this area. So we, I would assume that this was accumulating for 30 years. For three decades, gold was doing nothing. And then three decades later, it starts to move up. And if you go on lower time frames, like if you go on the daily, if you go on the eight hour, the, the six hour, lower time frames in the monthly, you'll see that there is proofs that show you that money is getting involved. And that brings on, that brings me to the second point of, you know, what I was talking about, which is the supply and the demand zone. So literally the supply, if I can actually draw it here nicely, a supply zone is nothing more than the last up move before the down move i know this is pretty horrible but imagine this candle right here is a bullish candle right and then this one is a bearish one so this whole area here oh my god so this whole area over here would literally be denoted as a supply zone or if it was the other case around it would be the last downward candle before the up candle this would be a demand scenario right so if you actually go on lower time frames and you see what was happening with gold in these areas over here you would see that exact same scenario and in this case it would be demand zones there would be a lot of zones where the price would move away rigorously and it would break down and it will move again rigorously so supply and demand zones are not necessarily zones for you to look for trades or look to get involved. It's just indicating to you that money is getting involved. And that's showing to me that that's how money gets involved. It's supporting this whole sentiment of it going up by continuously buying gold, by continuously buying, buying, buying and buying and buying. And it, it just leaves areas of, 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 of it makes areas or it just catapults itself up 
and that can give you a good indication that money is getting involved and also you could say the swing lows that were made on the lower time frames you could argue that they've never been touched ever since that move up in fact it's the gold price is right here right now of, 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 as we speak or as i make this video and the price has never been back to that area ever since so money got involved over here after 30 years of doing nothing and highs were broken but then the lows were protected which shows to you that that is another sign that this is this whole sentiment right here is bullish so not only we've proven that the structure is bullish we've proven that by using supply and demand zones and then the confirmation would be that since we've proven number one and number two we would look to get involved and how we would get involved is that we would want to see something like an impulse correction impulse again not my teachings i didn't make this up it was meant fx everything that i'm telling you right now it was literally from them but i'm just telling you guys it's it's an it's an impulse so the market would go up and then it would consolidate for a bit maybe go down and it would impulse again what you would do right is that since it's in a long situation because what i've shown right there on the price of gold on the monthly time frame it's in a long situation you would go you would enter on the next leg because and then your stop would be below the swing of that leg because what you know is that price or the structure and the sentiment around that market has proven to you that money wants to continue going up if it was this scenario if it was a, a bearish scenario then it would be vice versa but that's basically how i look to get involved i just look at the structure i look at supply and demand zones if there are any supply and demand zones in that structure but you have to let that scenario play out you have to let number one and number two the the structure and this it's the supply and demand zones you have to let that play out you have to let that prove itself to you once it's proven itself to you then you can look to get involved and how i get involved this is one of the ways the other way as well that i could also get involved is again is you look for a so the market would go up this actually happens a lot by the way i've seen this happen so many times the market will go up and then it will go down again and then it will go up and then what you do is that you draw a box from the most recent swing high and swing low and you have already proven that this scenario is bullish so what would happen is that when price would go down again you would denote this area as your supply zone because i really should stop using this but let me just use this actually i know this is an ugly sketch but i'm here to just show you stuff i'm not here to be pretty about it but this will be your demand your demand zone because price left that area rigorously and then what you would do is that you look for a sign of wyckoff or a sign of accumulation i haven't even really explained what wyckoff is so you probably don't know what that is but you basically look for signs of accumulation to then take it further up and once that those three criteria have been met then you can look to also take it long in that situation so number one is the ici or not the ICI, yeah, the impulse, the correction and the impulse. And the second one is the the box method, which I just explained there, right there. Like, that's how you get involved. It's the structure, it's the supply and demand zones. Let number one, number two prove itself to you. Once it's proven, then you can look to get involved. And once you get involved, you you, you, you execute the criteria. So it's more about waiting than actually trading. And you'll find that you'll only get about four percent or even five percent i don't know why i said four percent you'll find that you'll only take like a small minority of a trend most of the trend you won't even trade in that's just how it is like you're not looking to take the whole thing because you will never take the whole trend you can only take certain bits of it which is why it's better to put risk into those situations because you've already proven that money is in that so we're willing to risk or i am willing to risk taking 
trades on that if the scenario is like that same thing for our bearish markets hopefully this makes sense by the way and if it doesn't it's fine i'm gonna make loads of videos on this anyway so anyway